Uh-oh, looks like today's video is going to be a little bit of a tough topic. Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video is indeed a little bit more of a serious topic, but it is definitely one that I think somebody needs to speak up on and most of what we're going to focus on today is healthy attitudes towards skincare. I see I often see some rather obsessive mentalities being perpetuated within the skincare community and I think it's kind of important to call those out so that we can you know, prevent more dangerous mentalities and focus instead on the positive. So let's start this video with that exactly. Let's talk about healthy attitudes towards skincare. Now, I really only have two main arguments for each of my categories here. So first off, I think that skincare is a very healthy habit. You're actually gonna have a hard time arguing against this because the benefits of, you know, establishing daily practices such as wearing SPF, removing your makeup at the end of the night are well-established, healthy routines. You're already on a skincare channel, so I'm sure you understand that wearing SPF is a very healthy daily practice that will help to prevent a plethora of problems down the road. Same deal with removing makeup. We've actually seen quite a few medical cases of people who did not remove their makeup daily, so of course this is something that you will want to do as well. But as a second category here, I think it is just as valuable to recognize that skincare can be about self-care. We're kind of living in an interesting societal framework regarding this point right now. You know, we, we know that self-care and self-love is very important, but it's easy for some people to also critique this as vanity when the fact is we really do know that it is very important to maintain your emotional health, your psychological health via self-care. Somewhat annoyingly, I feel like we're done with the positives for this video, and I feel like it's probably going to be a lot shorter than the rest of this video. Keep in mind that those are absolutely as important, if not massively more important, than the rest of this video. It's just important to call out the rest of this video, and hence it will probably be longer. Again, I'm keeping this to two points, but I have a lot to say under point number one, and that is judging others. Wow, you will see this so much in the skincare communities. There are people judging others for having routines that are too complex, for having routines that are not complex enough, for spending too much money on skincare, for not spending enough money on skincare. It's basically two sides of the same coin always. The reason this ends up getting so complex in the topic of skincare is because when you are talking about skincare, the most important goal for all of us is to understand our own skin. But what ends up happening is as people are researching and understanding skincare, understanding their own skin, they often adapt these mindsets that their experience is all encompassing. This is a big problem and I think it's really important for us to kind of rein in this tendency to tell others that our experience is representative of everyone. I'm gonna give you an example of this based on something that happened in my comment section. I don't like to focus on what happens in the YouTube comments section in general, uh, but there was, there's such a prime example of this that I kind of have to bring it up. So I had made this video talking about some product. Somebody came in my comment section and said, oh, unfortunately, I'm not able to use that product because I'm allergic to one of the ingredients and they named the ingredient. Not even two minutes later, somebody had replied to that comment and said, and I quote, it's not possible to be allergic to that. I really don't think I've ever been more mad about a comment than I was in that moment because that is not only beyond rude, but also very incorrect. It is possible for anybody to be allergic to anything and it is not on you to decide what is what. And one more thing that I see related to this idea of judging others is people hating on dermatologists. Before you come at me and say, oh, Alice, there's no way that's possible. Have you not seen the massive respect that Dr. Dre has here on YouTube? Yes, I've seen it, but I've also seen many, many threads of people saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe the bad advice my dermatologist gave me. 
Yes, I get much better advice from Instagrammers doing Texture Tuesday posts than I do from my own dermatologist. This is actually a really dangerous mentality. This is the same kind of mentality that brings about things like the anti-vax movement, where people have suddenly decided that they know better than medical professionals. I think it's important to recognize that any doctor is a human, and humans by their own nature are imperfect beings. So it is possible for your dermatologist to give you not the best advice one day. It is even possible to go to a dermatologist who doesn't really work for you personally. But please do not throw away the entire field of dermatology based on one bad experience and don't perpetuate that idea on the internet. I cannot even imagine discrediting the amount of knowledge and education that these medical professionals endure to get their degrees, only to have somebody decide to post to a blog that they don't like the whole field. To put a bottom line to this point, I would say question anybody who is claiming expertise, especially if they are attempting to extrapolate it onto others. Yes, there are certain things as far as skincare is concerned that will remain mostly true for most people, but some people within this community are a little judgmental. Moving on to my second point, unattainable goals. You know, I think it's really important to understand what skincare can do and also what skincare can't do. And this is the exact reason why I tend to get frustrated with some of the claims that I see on packaging, on websites. You know, as long as skincare remains part of the cosmetics industry, it's not regulated to the level of medicine. And so what ends up happening is brands are kind of able to make claims that are not necessarily true just because there is really no greater board that is overseeing what is going on. But this topic is actually pretty easy to narrow down into one main concern, and that is the massive fear of aging. The fear of aging has really become a bit of a hallmark in a lot of skincare communities. It's the main focus for many people. You have people, you know, taking a magnifying glass to their skin, trying to figure out if they have fine lines developing or not. And it's really a toxic mindset. I really don't think there's a way to talk about this without bringing in at least a little bit of politics. So let's just get it over with. Most of you watching this video will be living in a capitalistic framework. And as such, we end up placing value on things that have more of a monetary value attached to them because that is what drives our society. As far as aging is concerned, I think maturity is a little bit of a hard sell. You know, how do you place a monetary value on a life experience? Meanwhile, selling the concept of youth is actually really easy really marketable and really profitable. But what shocks me is how many people are literally buying this at face value, no pun intended. And the way I see this structured most often within the skincare communities is actually quite well intentioned. I have two specific examples of ways this fear of aging manifests in the skincare world. The first is probably the most controversial part of this entire video, and that is behaviors around SPF. Please know that I am not for a second negating the importance of wearing sunscreen. It is very important. It is the most important thing, I would argue, in all of skincare. However, that doesn't mean that it's impossible for there to be obsessive tendencies around it. I think that any healthy habit actually has the possibility to spiral into something that is more on the obsessive side. And to give you an example, how many people have healthy diets, are working on bettering their diet, Whereas too far with that one, it's actually pretty easy to say, well, any kind of disordered eating is taking it to a point where now it's no longer healthy, it's actually unhealthy. And you might be thinking, how on earth can you have that with SPF? That doesn't even make sense. Well, some of the behaviors that I've seen around it, specifically the mindsets that I've seen around it, are actually quite concerning. I've seen people worried about the SPF that they're sleeping in, whether it's enough coverage for them, when they wake up in the morning. I think it's so important to ask yourself whether a habit or really anything that you are doing in your life is improving your life or leading to stress. And that is my concern when we're talking about this. I see some people absolutely stressing the sun. 
My second point, I'm just at an utter loss of understanding how we've arrived at this point. You know, whereas there are valid arguments against what I just said a moment ago, with this one, how did we get here? The fear of facial expressions. Yes, I have seen many people in the skincare communities giving advice about how to stop yourself from smiling. This one is so out of touch that I really don't even know where to start. We've seen studies demonstrating that people place more faith and trust into those who are willing to show facial expressions. Basically, you are more apt to trust somebody who is speaking not only with words, but also with their face. Not to mention that we've seen studies showing facial expressions actually go in the opposite direction, meaning if you are feeling down, force yourself to smile and it will actually improve your mood. So what is this trade-off that some people are proposing? Are we really supposed to have a completely flat face our entire lives, never express nor experience emotions? in the hopes of preventing a couple wrinkles down the road. Again, and I know I'm saying this several times, but this is just taking things so far. It's starting to feel like people are more afraid of the physical act of aging than of mortality in and of itself. For me, I think the best approach that someone can have to this is first acceptance, acceptance of what life is, the fact that we are all going to get older, but to follow that with gratitude, you know, aging is actually a privilege. And something I've really been thinking about, maybe we don't even really understand aging in and of itself, because think about this, is aging really defined by the amount of wrinkles that a person has on their face? I don't think it is. Because if it is, then tell me why these billionaires who have had all kinds of cosmetic procedures, who have the money to attempt to reverse the signs of aging in every modern way possible, why is it that not a single one of those people who is 50, 60, what have you, convincingly looks 20? So to wrap up this whole video, what I think the entire goal of skincare should be is one simple word, balance. So I hope this video wasn't too long and I hope I kind of made an effective argument for what I'd like to see the skincare community become. And again, that is a community that recognizes the limits, but also enjoys using skincare. Enjoys and celebrates what skincare can do, how skincare can make you into the best version of yourself. But to not accept these ridiculous, unnecessary, and sometimes dangerous notions. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.